it, and they've already taken out that Nunu, which you brought to light. So Evelyn and Nunu, as you mentioned, Kazik's also being banned out, and well, it's going to get taken away from Sharu there, or possibly Kubon. Of course, he's going to be played in a number of positions. Twisted Fate also being banned out, taken away from Sharu, a number of champions. Karthus, of course, was one of the strong champions of Sharu. He's very strong in that mid lane, so I wouldn't be surprised if everything in the bands is focused towards him. So Shane is still available here as well. We know that he's a very high priority pick, and you know some common trends from the previous games. The Jace, again, not being allowed through as well as that Nunu. I'm really happy to see the Nautilus ban coming up from SK because they realized how powerful Makate was, but it does mean Shane is there. So my guess might be there. If not, oh. it's going to be Thresh instead. Straight away, Libic is going to get Thresh. So this will be the first Thresh game we've seen since the Thresh Prince left the building and went to <laughs> Las Vegas. Not too successfully, unfortunately, either for uh, poor old Edward, but this doesn't matter because what are they going to go with? There's a lot of champions open right now that are, are considered very strong. And SK Gaming could easily grab a couple of them. The thing that you need to consider here as well, now Kevin plays a very, very good Shen. Uh, he, he was, I, I argued at some point, one of the strongest Shen players during the spring split. But it's a champion that is very passive. He's there to save your teammates, jump in afterwards. And Kevin likes to actually play a little bit more aggressive. So with that Elise uh, being hovered over right now, that could be top lane, that could be in the jungle. They could also decide to go for something like a rumble in that top lane. But at the moment, SK, they're holding their cards. They're saying, we don't want to reveal anything. Let's play this safe and, and decide where we go from there. Well, Caitlyn Panda has been locked in. It's a champion that he was famous for throughout Season 1, Season 2, and I guess Season 3 now because he's stuck with it, with her, yeah, for a long, long time. It was a champion I always used to mix up the names between Candy Panda and yeah, Thing. Okay. But just as you called it, there is the Ari for Sharu. So I'm quite happy to see that, at least in terms of the teams, they're sticking to their roots. And that tends to be the best, because it means that the overall performance of the game is going to be at a higher level. If they're not trying something like a Yi mid fiddlestick support, it's going to be safer, more reliable picks. I think that's going to be a Shen in the jungle, I'm going to go out on Olympia and say that I think that's going to be there, and I think MWA may try to counter-pick what they think SK's top lane is going to be. So we'll see how these next two picks go. I think you're actually right on that one, and as you can see, he's got that flash. That flash uh, shadow dash that he does, the taunt, uh, was very strong in the promotion series matches that he played in, so definitely sticking to what he knows, and Ocelot's going to be locking in Ariana. Well, I mean, it's it's a standard pick against the Naria, the Ariana. It, it really is. It's, it's a strong pick. It allows you have the burst to kill on, uh, an Ari if you catch her, as well as the utility. This also makes me think that that might be a jungle uh, Elise. And they might go for an initiation. If they don't, they might go for something like a Zin Zhao in the jungle. Somebody that you can, you can put the, uh, the ball onto and you know, get that initiation power. Because outside of sticking on Elise's head, SK don't have a clear let's fight button. And I think they need that. Could we be seeing a top lane rise? We did see Trindamir hovered over for a moment, of course. Maybe that's in homage to the baby Trindamir that has been bored. Uh, Mark Merrill, of course, having four, his... Four days old having now, his Four days old, yeah, baby Trindamir. I've already seen him with the shirt, baby Trindamir on. But uh, looks like Rise in the top lane. It's a champion that was pretty much been built up by the Korean team once again. Shy in that top lane, and effectively everyone in Korea now plays yep. that Rise top lane. And before we even got into this, I was talking to a number of players and basically asking them, how is your Rise top lane? And everybody's been saying, yes, we have been practicing players, it. So yeah. we're expecting to see a lot of this. And we'll see how it works, because it's, it has been locked in now for MYM. So they're going to be trying to bring that game, that meta across over here to EU. I think something like a Zin Zhao in the jungle, or maybe even a Malphite in the top lane would work here for SK Gaming, because they've got some great combos that can sit on top of one another. Elise can get in and out of fights well. Um, Oriana can deal lots of AoE damage, can control fight, but they need that go, go, go. And it's either Zin in the jungle or Malphite top. That's where I'm guessing they could still go for a rumble, but I think they want to get more of a synergy with an Oriana. And I imagine this is what the talk is with SK. Mm. You know, what do we want? What will fit our comp better? They need something to absorb the damage that's going to go in. Yeah. So they have the shields. Maybe, maybe even a Jarvan. It's, it's definitely possible. Jarvan's open as well, which would make top lane. And Herkubot's Jarvan is terrifyingly strong. That synergizes perfectly, and there you go. Exactly. So Jarvan the fourth was slipped through, made it all the way down. It was their number one top ban. It was one of the most picked, most played champions, and also one of the most successful of the spring split as well. Absolutely. Very strong champion. There are the teams. What are we seeing here then? Because immediately, obviously, with that teleport that Sharu has, he can join, along with Makata, there can just suddenly be a big force. You can either have three at the top or four down the bottom. 
basically, I think that's what it's going to boil down to. If SK Gaming are able to pick an engagement and end it before the Globals come into a play, if they can kill someone before Stand United fully channels, before the teleport happens, they can win the fights. If, however, they pick a battle that they do not win instantly, they do not have that 3,000 ELO shockwave, mm -hmm. I think that Global Presence is going to come into play and it's going to swing in their favor and really help them. There is a lot of interrupts, so those teleports and those Stand Uniteds can actually get shut down, but it's all on SK to either insta-win or run the risk of being outnumbered and outgunned. Well, if you have just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to get underway for the second match of the summer split. The first one was won by Fnatic. Sorry for the spoilers, guys. If you missed it, well, where the hell were you? <laughs> the, frankly, I mean, yes, how dare the they miss the first game of the European LCS? Yes. It, it had APE and it had support fiddle, so it's only your loss. We are in the last 20 seconds before this game loads up, and I definitely think the early game is in favor of SK Gaming. I feel like their champions will hit that you know, peak power at lower levels and with less items. However, the longer this game goes, the scarier MYM become. Yeah. You are not going to be able to kill Ryze. Shen is going to get mega, uber, ultra tanky. Ari is going to be able to insta get people. And I just feel that if SK don't win early, they don't win. I, I'm just going to say apologies to the other arenas around here because people do keep stealing your chairs. <laughs> and they are slowly gathering in the League of Legends area. It's a pretty popular game. Who would have thought? I, I, I no idea. MYM versus SK, it is the second game of the summer split. It's definitely one that, uh, actually you can, you can vote on if you head over to lolliesports.com. Click on matches, top right, and go vote who you think is going to be the victor. I have no idea what the percentages are, but everybody else can check. I, I'm thinking of checking it. That's Ooh, what I'm this, this, do. Is, this is brave, this is yeah. brave. This is impromptu percentages. We'll see whether or not, uh, whether we'll see who, who the favorites are, who the favorites are. Meet Your Makers versus SK Gaming. At the moment, 65% SK Gaming. Obviously, that means that 35% is for Meet Your Makers. So everybody backing a team that they recognize. But we are live into the game, ladies and gentlemen. It is the blue team of Meet Your Makers and the red team, of course, SK Gaming playing from top to bottom as a wild Joe Miller strolls on past my camera. <laughs> so in terms of the, the champions that we've locked in, I just want to quickly touch, Shen was the number one most picked, most banned champion of the spring split at 77%, and Jarvan is the second, uh, sorry, third best most victorious champion, winning 67% of their games. So you've got this clear tusk, you know, uh, fight back and forth between the super popular champions and another defensive start like we've seen from Fnatic and, S uh, and uh, Gambit. Yeah, nobody really wants to lose the first game. And if you think yourself, think you cast your mind back to the spring split start as well, it was very similar. The first week was very tense because nobody wants to go 0-5. That is for damn sure. Or they will all be playing five matches this weekend. And there's, there's a lot of, lot of action that you could go. You know, to get a 5-0 start would be a dream for any of these teams. And that's what they're all looking forward to. As it stands, though, it is going to be simply playing mobile wards, everybody standing in defensive positions, nobody going for any late invades. In terms of the bottom lanes that we can see setting up right now, Michael and Libic getting some vision down, almost getting that ward. If Libic gets a good death sentence onto either Janna or Caitlyn, they have very, very good kill potential at low level. Varus is going to have that percentage HP, the, the damage from Flay once Libic eventually gets it, it, it hits really, really hard. What you're going to see from SK is these these moments of poke where uh, Candy Pan is going to charge up those headshots, he's going to get the Eye of the Storm, that bonus attack damage, land the headshot bonus, and then back away using that range to just poke and poke and poke. And you know, no pressure to Libic, but the last Thresh that I cast was Mad Life. Um, I'm just saying, he was pretty good. Uh, you see, we'll see whether, how those plays work out for him because Jarvan could theoretically come sliding in and get played straight back. Yeah, we've seen, and we've seen that out of players like Mad Life and uh, uh, the Thresh Prince when Edward was still here. At the moment though, just this very slow start, Red Buff picked up by Herkipot. He had a lot of support there from Kevin's Elise. He's going to get up into that top lane. And you've got this top lane of you know AP versus AP, where both have fairly good uh, you know low-level base numbers, but Elise should win until q one starts stacking some mana with that tier. Yeah, you can see Candy Pan upon the pressure down. Libix trying to get some damage down on him, but Magma is going to continue poking out with that Q. The Varus' Q is the piercing arrow. Yeah, get the exact way. You got, see, I'm alongside you now. I can, I can easily just refer to I it. know, but I'm, I'm, I'm scared because you put me on the spot and then I panic. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Q, 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 Q. The moment though, Libic, he's still waiting for that level two. He needs a couple more CS. If they get this, he's, he wants to go aggressive. And you've seen his position. He was poising. He was like, I want to go, I want to go. But Makla just wasn't clearing that wave quickly enough. And Candy Panda, 
with some good poke damage is actually controlling Mike Van Lubick. No, we do see him getting caught out. He does get quickly dashes away with the 90 caliber net. There's no way he's going to get caught out that easily that soon. There's just simply not enough burst damage. Let's take a look in that mid lane. Of course, it is going to be Sharu on Ari versus Ocelot. Ocelot being a little bit of a lane bully there. You can see he's trying to keep him back, but quickly those balls coming out from Sharu. It's going to keep him, and it's a battle of the balls in the mid lane. Now we'll see whose is stronger. Right now, though, Herkubot, he snuck his way up into this top lane. Kubon still has his flash and that room prison, so he can hold one threat in place, but Mukata is well aware of it, and this is something we see out of LCS junglers, is this gank and counter gank, where they sort of go, I think they're going to go here. I think they have the ability to apply pressure, and they're there to react. This mid lane Ocelot has a strong advantage thanks to Orianna's passive, those clockwork wind-up. It's an additional magic damage with each auto attack. And if Charu actually stands toe-to-toe, -to -toe, flinging balls of fire against those little gears or whatever Orianna throws, he's going to come off worse for wear. Oh, meanwhile, this bottom lane is staying very even between them. 21-22, the Piltover Peacemaker just catching Mackler again there, but easily just life stealing that back with that Doran's Blade. Ever so slowly, of course, by the way. It's take a while these days with that Doran's Blade, but let's be the standard start that they go for and keep them uh, across the mini-map. Not a great deal of action. We do see, it looks like Kubon coming back to lane, but he's taking a bit of a wild route, so I'm guessing he's going to be trying to place that wall down in the river, which may or may not catch out Herkibot, because you can see it's already in position waiting. Yeah, and also in terms of timing, this wall that he's going to put down, it's going to cover the entry to the blue buff when it respawns. I actually think Kubon is delaying on purpose, because I believe he wants to get that ward down. It'll last the three minutes, and it'll cover the time frame for that blue buff respawning, allowing them to react if Herkibot does try to set up some sort of uh, uh, pressure or some sort of gank. So I think it's intelligent play. Once again, we do have a very brief pause. Yeah, it's me all makers with the pause at the moment. I can see it doesn't look like SK. They're all sat quite happily waiting. They're talking, although they shouldn't be doing that. Not allowed to talk about the game. Shouldn't be talking about the game. Not That's talk about the game. We'll Sorry. see when there are uh, yeah, admins are beyond the ball there. Don't worry. They're, they're, they're paying attention. Sharp ears and sharp eyes. <laughs> uh, apparently, there's a PC issue is what MYM was saying. So. We should uh, have that resolved fairly s shortly. So what are we seeing so far from the game? I mean, this is, this is obviously very even, very early stages. We're at five minute mark, no real pressures. No, we're not in the days where we used to see the crazy three minute tower dives. Yeah. It's actually very even across the board. And who wants to be pushing the early game here? SK. I think SK need to be pushing the early game because of just how much the MYM team is going to scale. Candy Panda will always outrange Varus, but the, the power that Varus' ultimate is percentage HP damage will offer in team fights will always be more powerful in Caitlyn in the late game. So the longer this game goes, the more difficult it is for HK to you know, overcome these, these very strong, very powerful champions that their opponents have. So we're just waiting for things to get underway. If you have just joined us, well, we are under a uh, small pause right now. It is uh, Meal Makers versus SK Gaming. Five minutes in, of course, we've just had Fnatic taking down Gambit in their first game of the season. Will it be the first of many? I did just ask Enrated, are we going to go 28-0 this season? He's like, nah, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to commit to that one. Too, uh, too early. We'll too see, early, We'll yeah. see how the rest of the weekend goes, and if they get a few more victories, I'm pretty sure Enrated might be a little more confident to, to go on the record with some prediction scores. Uh, but all of these teams want to. All of these teams want to get off to that good start, because uh, we talk about, you know, uh, the Copenhagen Wolves from the previous split who are now ninjas in pajamas. They had a very bad start. They were zero mm. for nine, and then they went 13 for six, which is a fantastic win-loss record after they start winning games. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they get going, of course. Remember, this is for a place in the World Finals. So the summer split will be leading up to that. And the dates are out there, actually. I'm not going to tell you the exact dates because it's kind of like a this block is yes. where the World it's, Finals is. It's a pretty is. big block. It's a pretty <laughs> big block. But that full schedule, it is on LOL Esports, so you can actually start planning your trips and, and looking at flights and things like that, because World Finals is going to be amazing. We are back underway, though, ladies and gentlemen. And we do see Herkibot in that top lane is going to back away, so no action will be happening there, unfortunately. And it is back down to this mid lane. And you can see Shari throwing out those balls. It's going to start getting aggressive. It's going to be very quick when the action happens there because that shockwave, the charm, they're all going to be going down at the same time. Yeah, the thing about, the thing we need to watch about that is Charu, of course, would teleport and not ignite. Means he needs to land absolutely everything on Ocelot when Ocelot is alone. No minions can soak up any of that additional damage because of the shield that Orianna is going to be able to, you know, put on herself, keep himself alive. We have another very brief pause. D-Man, I think you're bringing some bad luck. It's, it's always me. 
It's it always me. Be. Sorry, it guys. Sorry. It's, it, it is always a game like us. The the, uh, the pauses do happen. I'm trying to remember All Star games. It was there was a few pauses in and amongst there as well, but there were not too many. No. No. Oh, can't bring that one on me. I'm just I'm just trying to see. I if didn't. We can really I didn't have a pause in any All Star games. I think you're fine. I was perfectly. I'm I just only did two games. I'm just trying to pin it on you. Just trying to pin it on you. That's yeah. all. That's yeah. all. Yeah. No, we had no problems. You can see it's uh, Kubon actually at the end there, just for the uh, computer issue. The uh, Meet Your Makers team just. Of course, right straight on the case. Yeah, basically we just want to get this as optimal for the players as possible. You can't be playing on a PC that's... Oh, it's a PC swap. Some, this is going to be a long one, guys. Oh, if you do have some lag issues or, you know, graphical bugs or things like that, it's... This is the equipment. This is the tools of the trade. If you have a faulty engine in a race car, you swap it out. You, get you one swap it out. What I want to do is, is remind you guys of, of last season because... There's a, there's a lot of people that may be here that may not have seen everything that did happen in the spring split. So let's give you a quick rundown of uh, exactly how it worked out. Of course, we did have the playoffs, but more importantly, the league positions, what, what so led up first, to it. First and foremost, Fnatic, 22 for 6, mm. going into you know the playoffs. So we're going to ignore the playoffs for now. That's a win percentage, 79% of the games. One of the things that's very interesting about the top five, I've, I've got all the numbers written down yeah, here. I, just it's for got a it moment, all on a bit of face of just paper, right? Just for a moment like this. All of the top teams average between 1.5 or 1.6 thousand gold per minute as a team aggregate. Everybody below the top five was around 1.2 to 1.3. Just based on like mechanical skill alone, when you look at teams from the previous split, it's it's a really really interesting thing to note. Just but how, how is that goal built? I mean, uh, I think as uh, statistically, it was like something like the first tower that goes down. Um, Jason would be better with this one because he's been working hard on some sort <laughs> on of <the> database. <laughs> uh, it, it's something ridiculous with a percentage that the first person that takes the, gets the first kill, like Gambit, if they get a first blood, they generally go on and win the game, the game like 70% of the time. There's all sorts of crazy stats he's working on that I think we're going to start seeing coming out over the season. Well, and basically the, the more games we have, the more wealth of data we can pull from. And, you know, talking about Gambit, they went 21 and 7. They lost only one game more than Fnatic. But interestingly, they were the ones that beat Fnatic throughout the split. They beat them 3-1 over the course mm. of their four games, but then lost in a best of five extended series. So it shows you just how close the top, the upper echelons of the scene really are here in Europe. Yeah, and of course, uh, I mean, SK Gaming, they didn't have an amazing start. They, they kind of worked the way through, but they kind of snuck through. I mean, they ended up with 17 and 11. It's so, not a bad record. So I was looking at SK Gaming stats, and I was looking at the games and the history coming into this, uh, you know, this, the summer split. And the thing that SK did, every team below them, they beat consistently. Mm. Uh, I think, you know, th there's some strong words from Deficio from Ninja's Pajamas who said, summer split, like, we want SK. Because they went down four, they lost all four games mm. to SK. They just couldn't find a way to beat SK Gaming. And this is what kept SK in that top four, kept them in that third position for so long. The ability to defeat teams like Against All Authority, Giants, Dragonborns, but they faltered when they came up against the number ones and twos of Fnatic and, and uh, Gambit. Yeah, and you look at Copenhagen Wolves, you know, the fact that they did go that 13 and 6, they ended 13 15. If they can start off well this time, they are now known as Ninjas in Pajamas. In case you missed it, they did transfer organizations, so NIP have themselves a presence. They're not just the Counter Strike legends, they are now League of Legends, uh, legends. very popular team. Yeah, honestly. very, very true. You know, they're pop it's, funny, it's a funny story for them because when they went 0 9, everyone kind of got behind them. Yes. Even the players were like, we really want them to win a game now. We're starting to feel sorry for them. I still remember Nono's face because it was against was Authority. So against Authority gave them their first victory. Those were the Wolves and it, was, it had the pain to kill from Syndra and Nono was just, there was just so much emotion. I do want to pull out one thing though because there is something that everybody seems to forget. Bjergsen joined the team and his first three games with the they team... They did lose. They lost. They lost. So they were actually 0 for 6. It wasn't an six. instant turnaround. Correct, yeah. correct. They were 0 for 6 when Bjergsen joined. They lost three games that weekend. They were then 0 for 9. And that's when it turned around. It just seemed that he needed that extra week. He needed a games on the stage under the lights to settle and find his groove. And boy, when he found it, did he hit it hard. Everybody making mad dash to get food quickly before it. <laughs> the pause continues. As you can see here, that is the stage setup we have, and there is the glorious dream hack in the background. You can see the banks of computers back there. This is one hall of four, I believe. Yeah. It's and this is, so, so what you're looking at is about a third of one hall, and there's four of them. Well, to, to give you the numbers, there's 25,000 tickets sold for this event. There's 10,000 people with PCs alone, which is a lot of computers right it's, there. It's, it's a lot of power involved in that. There's a lot of bandwidth involved in that as well. A lot of well. bandwidth. There's a lot of onesies as well. 
I must admit, I'm not quite sure where the Swedish attraction to the onesie comes from, but there is a lot of them, and it's not only DreamHack, it's a number of Swedish organizations and things that, well, that the, like those onesies. The boss man things. himself is wearing one this weekend as well. It's true, but I still don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> not my thing. <laughs> Ninjas in pajamas. They're comfy. They hey, you're, you're, you're a big man of. Big, I got a big fan of the comfy pants. So. Don't don't bring up the comfy <laughs> pants. One time I wear comfy pants. One time. So guys, we do apologize about this. The game is still being delayed, as uh, D-Man pointed out. It is a PC swap out for Cubon, so hopefully we can get that resolved uh, mm -hmm. quickly. I can see that Riot is working fervently over there, working on the machines, and then these things happen. This is the this is the. The one issue with esports, it's not like we're playing football, we gotta just change the ball out so quickly. <laughs> the Tire problem with esports is you kind of reliant on that PC working, and you know, they just swap it out, no problem. Get the Technical problems are a little bit more difficult than my studs are broken or my shoelaces yeah. are untied. I need no boot. Okay, yeah. that's nice. <laughs> you best go get some nets on. Uh, some, of, some of the interesting stats that I've also just got written down here. First of all, uh, highest KDAs. Hercubot had the number one KDA out of mm. all of Europe last summit. 7.5 average kills, deaths, and assists. And I know the last weekend or two, he was averaging like 18 to 20. It's not quite Helios level as far as North America. I believe he's on 42 after their first, first week. But, you know, number one KDA leader for Europe is in the game right now. You can see the stage set up. Everybody's sat ready and waiting. The players are sat ready and waiting as well, to be fair. SK Gaming are all sat in the staying relatively calm. I can see lots of mouse clicking going on. So there must be, there must be doing some sort of out of game. I believe that we, we are potentially live again and it's just a matter of uh, the spectator catching up with the actual game. So we will be finding that out very, very shortly. It looks like a couple of readies yep. are coming back in. So to remind everybody, it is of course SK Gaming versus and meet your makers. We are back into game number two of the LCS. Put your hands together. So here we go. Five and a half minutes gone. And a very close, even game, my word. I thought it was going to be was a Vuvuzela a, Was a that a Vuvuzela? Oh, air horn of Vuvuzela. Yeah. The song of my people, whoever you are, you are <laughs> the awesome. The song of my people. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Next thing the Lion King will be on. So as it stands, Candy Pan is getting caught out with that hail of arrows down that bottom lane. Makla just putting the pressure down and... <laughs> Trevor's lost it. <laughs> no, I'm finished. You see the oh, death. Oh. It's called Candy Panda. It is going to get down. The play comes out as well. The damage going down on towards Candy Panda. They keep it up. They do manage to catch him as well. Very nicely done. And Candy Panda taking a lot of damage quickly from Makla there. Great control from Levick and Makla. It was actually like slow-paced fighting. They were just landing each and every consecutive auto attack. At the moment, Candy Panda is forced very, very low. He did take cleanse instead of barrier as his summoner spell. So if he does get caught up by that ignite or by some CC, that cleanse will obviously help him run away. But at this low HP, he's not going to save his life. So wisely, Candy Panda backs off. Only Gale does go out and he is, of course, going to get Herkubot to come and defend him. Everybody's going to back away. It's a double Doran's blade being picked up along with those boots for Candy Panda. We'll see whether Magda's going to do just the same. No, he's going straight for the pickaxe. Straight aggression and a second Doran's blade. Not bothering with the boots this time on Varus. So he's going to be relying on the fact that Thresh can set him up to pick up kills. And that's basically his gambit. Janna is not necessarily the most aggressive of supports. Janna's not really going to put you as an AD carry in a position where you can get caught out if you position and farm safely. And that's all Makla's saying. He's like, I'm not afraid of you. I'm not worried about your Howling Gales or your slows from that Zephyr. So I'm just going to try to fight as hard as I can. Interesting choice between Sharu and Elsalot as well. Elsalot comes back with the uh, Chalice going towards that Athens and Holy Grail. Technically, Athens and Holy Grail could also come out from Sharu. He went for the, uh, the Codex instead on the Doran's Ring. Get that little bit of hit points along with the hit points that Ocelot picked up with the Ruby Crystal. So basically when we look at uh, you know builds like that, I would actually expect that Fiendish Codex to become a Deathfire Grasp for Ari. And mm. the reason for that, Ari with blue buff and maybe one or two Doran's Rings is actually sufficient mana regen. She doesn't spam quite as much as an Orianna does, which is why Orianna needs that chalice because you're going to be doing command attack, command attack, command attack and burning through that mana pool very, very quickly. Yeah, Making sure he collects all of the gold in terms of gold. They are at 66 CS apiece. We do see wards being placed out from Sharu in the river. Blue buff, of course, is going to get picked up by Oslot with the assistance of Herkibot. I expect the exact same to be done for Sharu very soon. Yeah, at the moment, it's just this moment that the. the, the Exact same thing that we've seen from the previous game where Fnatic and Gambit played it very slowly, very passively. Here, SK and MOM, they're looking for opportunities, but they're not trying to force them. Unless somebody really, really obviously oversteps their, their safety or their bounds, then 
There's no big engagements. Michael and Lubick trading back and forth. Candy Panda actually picking a fight and 90 calibers to safety. Yeah, 90 caliber back to away. He is just keeping the pressure onto Libic, wants to stop him getting those souls, but I don't think it's going to work out too well. And Candy Panda continues to keep the poke down. Still very even CS between those two as well. And the top lane, it's even across the board. And who does this benefit the most of? The fact that they are. We talked about the fact that Meteor Makers are a stronger late game team. We are only 10 minutes gone coming yep. up to this game, so we're nowhere near that stage just yet. But SK not really putting the pressure on that they need. So the one thing that MYM are severely lacking in their composition is a very clear initiation tool. Outside of Thresh throwing himself at the enemy with a death sentence or Ari catching somebody with a charm, they don't have a Jarvan that, that can, you know, cataclysm in with an Orianna ball. So picking fights is always going to be in SK's favor. And even though their team maybe may not scale quite as well, if they pick the right fights at the right time, they can win them based out of the, the burst damage that can be put down from a full combo of the SK team. We'll see what happens in this bottom lane because SK Gaming, they do look like they're... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Hello, blue screen! <laughs> well, I'm... we can still see what's going on, luckily, so... As it stands, I think we should be fine. Hopefully yes. we'll be switching to another screen at the moment. Don't worry, guys. We can see our screen. It's fine. So at the moment, <laughs> if uh, production wants to jump on, we can, of course, follow the action. And Yay. he's being looked at here. Candy Panda and Herkubot sneaking around on that bottom lane. Is that and you or me? That's me. That's, That's me. That's you who's going to be driving. Oh, Jesus. Libic. Back to do my camera. Chain of Corruption does land straight away. They jump on towards him. The monsoon comes out from Nif. It is going to be enough to keep him away. And I'm going to have to turn Auto Director off. And oh my god, the scroll button's on the wrong key. This is going to be a disaster, guys. I've got to do the camera. If, if production were on the same page, you you can, of course, jump over to my camera, which I have configured and, and looked at. In the middle lane, Ocelot forced out of lane. He's been pushed backwards. No ignite means that, unfortunately, there can be no kill for well, Charlie. Since they paused it, I'm going to change. Oh, we no, have it's, it's had the a scrolly very bug. brief pause. We <laughs> have had a very brief pause. So I don't know if this is for our benefit or for the players. But Blue Screen of Death making its LCS debut. <laughs> I don't Decent. think I've ever seen that before. No, I, I can legitimately say I, I have not. That is that is a first for me. That Thanks, Microsoft. Ooh, strong words. <laughs> strong words. I'm not touching that one. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> so we do have the game unpausing very, very quickly. Uh, it was an MYM pause, so we'll see uh, exactly who is going to be jumping back into this. Ocelot still has not recalled. And it does look like the Spectator PC is back up and running, so yeah. we'll see how this goes. Bottom lane, MYM put a little bit of damage into their bottom lane tower, but forced backwards. The first stand United of the game was used in that bottom lane, but it amounted to nothing. They were not able to lock down members of SK, and it does mean that that ability is on cooldown now. I'm not sure if that's... That's not me. No, no, no. Right. It's, 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 it's not you, it's not you. It's, not, it's a different PC, that's all it is. Yeah. Good. They have very big names on this one as well. You, you can't miss what name they are, really. <laughs> so Candy Magda. Panda going head to head with Magda there, using that shield, of course, from Nif. Very low on mana himself. So let's have a look. He's, you can see that Ocelot's gone back. He's got the captains to protect her now. He's backed himself off. He's kept up with the CS. Looks like the Wraith's actually going to be picked up by Shari. So he needed that little bit of extra gold there. Kumon helping him out. So still, no deaths. We do see her but waiting in the wings, though. And he does have his ultimate on cooldown. So even if he jumped in, he would need to land a perfect EQ combo. Get that knock up in the air because there would be no more CC to, you know, lock them in place. Makla is going to hold strong and he gets out. That was very close. That very, was very, very close indeed. But Candy Panda's going to keep on it. He's free farming. We do see that Makla's gone back. Actually picks up a pink ward. Now, if you remember back, it's cast your mind way back to WCG 2011. Pink wards were really won out by Meteor Makers there. This dragon is getting picked up by SK Gaming. Nobody can see this at all, but it, it's something that they went for all the time. It was the pink wards. They were kind of the champions of it. Instead of using oracles, they used to use pink wards everywhere. I'm actually going to say you can go even further back, and if, if I remember back to the Gof Joe were casting the EU Nordic and East yeah. matches, MYM just littered the map with pink wards, no matter who they were playing, no matter what composition. Much like Charu permanently using teleport, it's just something that the team was renowned for, and it obviously pays dividends. You know, it allows you to uh, clear out vision, allows you to control the site. And we do see Chara as we're looking at him, he has got that needlessly large rod. So he's going for that DFG first, as opposed to something like that at the end. That's what he builds into. Top lane, of course, is Rise as well. So he's going for the standard builds. He's got the Tyrion Goddess and the Capitalist the Protector. Kevin, meanwhile, went for the Haunting guys and starting to build up that magic pen that you do get on Elise. We do see the Negatron's Cloak also just being picked up by 
Cube on there, just and a little bit of defense. A, that's an important pickup there, actually, mm. for, for Cube One, because that uh, of the way you know Rise is going to scale and build and get that mana, get the resistances. Kevin's not actually going to have enough damage to get through all of the resistances and HP that Q One's Rise is going to have. Plus, when Q One hits his ultimate and get that spell ban, he's just going to clear out those waves and sustain much more effectively than Elise will. So down the bottom lane they return. A BF sword picked up this time by Candy Panda. Still, so he's going to have that damage advantage over Mac. Though the Pink Ward also put down in towards that didn't want. To see Libic sneaking his way into them, which is throwing out those hooks. Meanwhile, they have the pink war battle continues, and Libic will take down a ward of his own. That's a big damage difference as well. The fact that Candy Panda has the BF sword first, in addition to uh, you know the Janna, who's probably going to have three or four levels into her E, which is going to be another big, massive chunk of auto attack damage. The only thing is, it's all on Candy Panda. Candy Panda has to do the poke, the control get the 90 caliber net. So there's not really kill potential from that Janna and Caitlyn combination. And it's, it's basically what you're seeing in these fights. He's just farming it up as safely as he can, trying to get to a point where Jarvan Elise can jump in for a fight and Candy Panic can just clean up with his uh, you know, damage from behind. We haven't really made use of the teleport yet either. We'll see whether Shari does suddenly start making the moves. Of course, the second one's picked up by SK Gaming, so that does mean that they have that 1,000 gold advantage. Tower's not really being pushed across the board. Nobody's making aggressive moves on the towers. Nobody's stacking up, trying to go for it. We do see once again Herkibot coming down the bottom, but he's pacified straight towards, so they know that he's there. They know they have to be ready and waiting defensively, and that's why you see Makata sat just waiting in the wings. Yeah, so it does look like we will be jumping to another spectator position quickly, and we'll see how well Makata is going Hi, to be able to counter this gank because at the moment he is you know sitting in a position about to butt heads with Herkubot. We will pull up hopefully my computer screen in a moment. I'm not having any issues right now and I can of course drive this one so we'll see how well this works. Uh, at the moment the game is still continuing on. There is no fights, no engagements and meet your makers are basically just farming this out as passively as possible. Yeah hopefully they will switch the screens back in a moment. I just uh as you can see, the producer just sprints past, so it's kind of like, ah, <laughs> it's all going wrong. But it's good that you can see us, guys, because we can keep you up to date with what exactly is happening, even if it does surprise me. Here we go again. We're back on the screen. It is yours. Uh, we'll see if this is actually mine. I am not. No, it's not. not it driving, doesn't matter. It's so APC. So we'll see how it works. It is currently on directed camera, and that will, of course, then drive it. At the moment, again, no ganks, no fights. 800 gold difference. Cubon is battling with Kevin in the top lane. They trade back and forth a little bit but overall nothing too dramatic and basically it's just a farm fest it's there's, a, there's it's nothing else to analyze fest. yeah they're, they're, it is a 15 minute farm fest so far guys as we you'd expect it but the middle turret has gone down finally so the first turret of the game it's Sharu that kept the pressure on there so Ocelot has managed to lose his middle turret he has got himself a rod of ages though along with that death fire grasp that he said yeah. Sharu was going towards We'll see whether they do actually start fighting soon, though. Now, that's something that is going to play into Ari's favor because he does not have that Ignite to pick up any kills for Orianna. He's going to be relying on the burst from the DFG to initially chunk him down and then follow it up with the rest of the magic damage. With that middle uh, tower down, Ocelot's going to be under more pressure to farm defensively and keep himself safe. And you can see him, he's picking up the Wraith camp. In down the, the bottom lane, they're going defensive and it's going to be the first kill picked up. Sharu goes in there. Meanwhile, the top lane, they're also diving in towards it. It's going to be Nif getting caught out though. Sharu should pick that one up. Makla's the one that takes it. So that is two kills straight away for Meteor Makers. It's not over because there was a fight in the top lane. They traded damage back and forth. Mukata used his stand United and you can see that both Kevin and Herkubot have been pushed backwards. So with those kills and the gold advantage of the tower, MYM are pulling slightly ahead. Kevin is going to be hard pressed to defend this lane, but in fact, MYM decides to back away and not fight in the bottom lane and pick up a tower. That's the second turret of the game, and that does push Meteor Makers with a 2,000 gold advantage now, despite the fact that SK Gaming did pick up that first dragon. So we see them all backing off. Infinity Edge slowly getting built up by Macler. He's almost completed that major, major item. Meanwhile, Candy Panda also pushing towards the same thing. He's a little bit further behind in the build. Now we'll see whether or not uh, uh, this, this composition of SK can handle the pressure that MYM can apply. You're talking about how the teleport had not been used and within a minute or two, Charu joins the fight in the bottom lane once that DFG was completed and he picks up you know, the first blood, followed up with the second kill. It is on cooldown, will be for a couple more minutes, but once it's available again, the fact that those towers are down in both middle and bottom lane means SK are at threat of being caught out because they have to overextend further into you know, non-safe areas. 
And actually, if you look at Makatsu, he didn't upgrade past the, past the claw, the Matrix. Uh, and instead, he's going straight, rushing straight away for that uh, Rooney Bulwark. And it's something that Herkipot has not done. Herkipot's been looking for those kills, but it's just not been working out. Whereas Makata already is in that team stance, that team help to come straight in there. And I expect me or Makers are going to start grouping up soon. I've got to be honest, touching on, you know, uh, Herkubot and, and, and his ganks, if we think back to the spring split, his early level ganks were incredibly powerful. You know, pre-20 minutes, he was able to find opportunities and find ways to make kills happen. Right now, he's been unable to replicate that success. Number of vision and sight wards are down in and around the dragon area. MYMR posturing maybe for a fight. SKR a little bit out of position, but the numbers advantage is with MYM. But take a look, there is no teleport and no stand united, so that's very, very crucial if MYM pick a battle. Yeah, you can see Meteor Maker starting to get in position. Kubon is trying to cut off Kevin there. Kevin instead has gone back towards the top lane. It does mean they're going to dive in. Herkibot's going to get caught out. He gets hooked. He gets. Yeah, I can't use that word, but Makata and Libic, they do manage to make a very successful kill. Absolutely destroyed, and it all comes down thanks to those visions, thanks to the sight that they had, the ability to actually control the vision in and around the map, land a good charm and hold Herkubot. Dragon goes down, MYM are moving forward, Ocelot's got that command protect on, and MYM, if they get a hook, they're going to go in. SK are thinking about this, and this is brave. They're thinking about going for it, and it's going to be it's Kevin that goes in there. There's going to be the ball on top of his head. Will it be enough? Chain of Corruption comes out. He could well stop them in their tracks. Whoa. They do manage to get Living down there, but look at Sharu. He's keeping the aggression down for me or make as well. They get out very, very successfully. So a good fight there from SK and it's what we were saying that MYM is lacking that initiation power. Unless they throw themselves at their enemy, they don't have a clear engagement. Whereas an Elise, a Jarvan, a command uh, uh, shockwave from Oriana is a great initiation tool and allows them to at least pick up an exit kill. But SK is still 2,000 gold behind. And apologies, guys, of course, the, the colorblind mode is not on, nor is the game sound, but that is just an issue that obviously the, uh, the main PC that we are using to spectate has had issues. So we're just using a backup. It will be fixed, of course, for the next match. As it is, though, we're going to continue on in this game because we don't want to interrupt the players too much. And SK Gaming, they're starting to slowly fall behind here. They did manage to get a kill on that last one, but they need to put some pressure on these turrets. And they need to actually pick fights. What they did that was very smart after that Dragon Engage was jump in, pick up a kill, and then back away safely. They didn't give up anything more. And that's what they're going to need to do to keep themselves in this matchup. Because they have that clear advantage of picking fights, they need to make use of that. If they let MYM come to them, then it's going to be on MYM's terms with Stand United, with Teleport, with Vision, and they're obviously going to fall behind. And do you see in the top lane? Kevin's caught. Kevin gets hooked. He does manage to repel away, though. Will it be enough? We can see the hook will not be back out. And that was very well played by Kevin then to quickly escape the duo lane of Libic and Mac. They have now moved themselves in towards that top lane. We do see Makata making his way away across. He's just shadow dashed across from the Baron pit. Herkibot was there and he just puts the ward straight on his head. So he's going to be fully aware that that vision is there and wisely because Herkibot was around, it does look like that Makata is recalling up in that top lane. We'll see whether or not Kevin decides to stick around and try to fend off their last outer tower. There are two towers behind and a dragon, but it only equates to about 2,000 gold. So SK are still farming well, even though you know they've got all this map pressure. Charu is trying to defend this mid turret, takes a lot of damage from Candy Panda. Yeah, that mid top turret has gone down though. And SK Gaming, they're going to start pushing for this one. It looks like me or Makers might well try and go defensive here. We do see Sharo backing off with the duo lane heading down the river. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. The fact that they got that tower, that means they now have the ability to come down. There's a teleport coming in from the side. Sharu's thinking about it. He cancels it, gets 50% of the cooldown back, and it just shows MOM are willing to make plays. They wanted to teleport in, get the charm from behind after, you know, Ari can dash in there very mobile, but instead they decide to back off and say, not this time. Yeah, it's those exact plays that put Meteor Makers in towards the summer season as well against. Dragonborns in the promotion playoff. They came back from two games behind to take it 3 2. And now Meteor Makers there on the aggression. You can see Libic just off the side. He is stood on top of a ward trying to get those hooks out. So they're well aware that they're going to be coming. And they quickly wave clear. So very good defensive wards from SK allows them to at least react to that play. Uh, you could, you know, posture that if they didn't have vision, they may have been caught out. So I like the fact that even though they're falling back, there's still wards, look, in the river, in the mid lane, that SK are trying to keep some control. The problem is there's waves pushing against their top and their bottom lane. So as they split up to try and deal with 
the minions, MYM are just going to get free damage on the tower. The hook is caught, Kevin. The hook is caught in. That's going to be the shockwave. It got on towards Mac that quickly flashed out of it there. And we saw there was a Herkibot diving in. Didn't go for the Cataclysm, though. No, didn't quite catch him just in the right time. But that does mean that there's going to be two ultimates burned for SK. So the shockwave is down. It's about a minute and a half before it'll be available again. But look at the damage that Mac is taking just from the poke there of those volatile spiderlings and the Piltover Peacemaker. So he's dropped low. He doesn't have a Vamp Scepter yet. So his sustain will be you know, minimal at best. But MYM is not afraid. They are keeping up this pressure. They do see another good hook, and they are going to go in with it, actually. And while this is That's all happening, awkward. the split push is off there. Chain of Corruption does go off. Kevin gets caught out. The charm comes through. They do put a lot of damage down on him, too, and the Dark Passage was just used to simply back away. But while this is all happening, we did have Makata split push in the side. Yeah, MYM had very little communication. I seen the Varus ultimate go out, and my brain was going, That's very strange. They're going to fight now with Shen. Shen didn't come into Stand United. Nobody from MYM dove in. Then you've seen, you know, the charm landing onto Kevin's Elise and nobody jumped on there. I think MYM are not a hundred percent convinced of what the correct action was so they did nothing instead. Even though, you know, each landed, oh, now we're in the middle and the taunt is up. Tell a lie, they're going to flash taunt in there. Ocelot's the target. They're going to get towards him. He should go down. He will go down. It's Sharu that picks up the kill. So the tower was the only thing that kept MYM back. The only reason MYM didn't throw themselves at that fight, they were afraid to fight under the tower. They caught out Ocelot with no tower, no additional defenses, and they popped him. Now, five members of MYM are going to be pressuring this middle lane. The moment Varus gets there, we'll see how well... The SK can defend because at the moment they're, they're falling further behind. Well, they're falling behind because Magda's just gone, well, I'm going to go farm this top wave. <laughs> you guys can keep pushing, but I'm off. I'm going to farm. So instead, Meatle Makers do all back away and SK Gaming, they are back once again in a precarious position. They're looking to maybe try and get in there. That's going to be a shadow dash on towards Kevin. Kubon comes around. He tights up the loop room prison. Will the hook land? No, it Ooh, won't. That was Living close. just misses out. That was very, very close. If that hook had landed, uh, Olympic would have been able to pull himself over the wall with the secondary active of that death sentence. But instead, he manages to get to safety. The one thing that you can never, ever discount when you are looking at an Orianna is the power of that shockwave. Think about the alternate attacks victory over <laughs> Giants. How one shockwave, when a team was 15,000 gold behind, won them that game and that series and a berth into the LCS. SK Gaming, if this trend continues, will be hoping to perform similar because at the moment they're behind in practically every metric. SK Gaming trying to take the dragon here. You can see they've already started off, but the rest of the Meteor Makers are starting to collapse in towards them here. They have to be very careful about how they play this one, and SK rightfully back away. They're not feeling strong enough in the team fights just yet. No, Kevin was a little late to the party. In addition, MYM have got very good vision if you look at the minimap, but now as SK decides to group up as a five and push forward, ooh, the charm has caused out Herkubot. Oh, it's not really the one they want to get. And he does actually go very aggressive there. The rest of Meteor Makers claps in him towards him. SK Gaming are going to try and rush this for the tower. This is a smart move from SK because the Deathfire Grass active was used by Charu. He was anticipating an aggressive play from Herkubot, but instead he backed off. Now the presence of MYM from the side has been enough to save the tower, but that's two or three auto attacks away from complete you know, destruction. And that's what SK will be looking to try to pressure here. Again, it is. Situation zero. And you can see SK, they want to get back on this dragon, but they don't really feel comfortable enough to start it off. And you can see Meteor Makers, Lipic throwing out the hook there, catching it on it. And we'll actually mean the dragon will get started off. And SK Gaming, they're going for this one. And well, Charu is a long way away. He does have teleport. Will he get used it? I don't think he will. And it's looked like SK will secure the dragon. Very good play from SK Gaming, realizing that they had that opportunity. They knew that they had the numbers advantage. They were clumped up as a Titan at five, and they all had their ultimates available. So if a fight broke out, they had that great initiation burst potential. Instead, it's just going to close that gold gap just a little bit. Teleport is available, as you mentioned, for Charu. So we'll see if he decides to use it. It looks like he is using it onto the enemy blue buff. So we'll see who he's going to catch out. It could just be a split push. That's a very interesting teleport. <laughs> oh, it's for Candy Panda. That's why I didn't see him caught up in the bottom. Is the charm going to land? He does manage to use his ultimate. Lands it straight in there, and it just pops it where he stands. No chance at all. And that was an easy pickup for Charu. Yeah, I apologize for doubting you, Charu. You've seen the opportunity. I just couldn't see Candy Panda off to the side of the minimap there. And of course, he realized that he could jump in from behind and pick up that kill right now. MYM now stacking up in this middle lane, and we'll see if they win it, apply pressure, or they can just play as slow as they have. Well, no, with that 20 second death time, they're almost certainly going to push in for this tower. It may well mean the first inner turret of the game will go down. 
It's Meal Makers keeping that pressure on. And now it's 4 for 0 in turrets. And SK Gaming, they've really got to get themselves a turret. Got to get themselves something to push out from their base because they are slowly but surely being shoved back in there. Basically, I really feel like SK needs to pick a fight. They have great synergy when they combo all of their abilities together. And if the fight is going a little bit awry and a little bit strange, you can reset it with the Janna Monsoon with her ultimate. Kick everyone from MYMI, get rid of Ari, get rid of Ryze and say, this is who we want to focus and you know, pick off one kill after the other. It's a 4,000 gold deficit, which is not a massive number, but because of how quickly Charu can kill somebody, it becomes a much bigger deficit when they lose a member. Onslaught's continuing his farm. He's got um, Athens and Holy Grail complete. So, meanwhile, though, Phantom Dancer versus Azeel is the difference between the AD carries Makla in a much stronger position. Despite the fact they've got the same amount of farm, there's just one kill apiece, of course, that assist, and the fact that all the global objectives with those towers being picked up has given Makla that advantage. And Ace in the hole was just used out there, trying to get on towards Shari, it was blocked off. It doesn't mean that that ulti is not going to be available for a short while. The tower on the bottom lane was being shoved there and starting to work it down again. So talking about the itemization as well, you can also see that the Negatron Cloak has been picked up by Candy Panda. So not only is he a little bit further behind in terms of damage, he does have a little bit more survivability and that's because he's facing a double AP comp. With both Ryze and Ari, it's, it's a very, very good item pickup and it'll most likely become you know, a Banshee's Bale at some point later in the matchup. Right now, SK just grouped up to defend this bottom lane turret. Stand United is available, so at a moment's notice, if Mokata does want to join the party to play, he can do so. They have a big creep wave on that top lane that's going to be pushed in by Mokata, and of course this bottom lane is where Meteor Makers are going to follow this creep wave up. So SK Gaming have to be in a defensive position ready, but they are all well out of position. They're going to have to dash across to try and get over towards this turret because Meteor Makers are all over it already. Yeah, by the time SK gets here, this tower is going to be dead. Simply put, they, were, they, they didn't anticipate MYM re-initiating on that tower and it's because they have no vision. There is no vision down on the bottom half of that map as far as SK Gaming is concerned so they simply were not aware that MYM had stuck around for that long. So this is what SK needs to work on. They do have uh, that you know sight stone sitting in Janna's pockets and gonna be trying to get some vision control but they really need to do a lot more with the wards to prevent that happening. Sharu is going to pick up the blue buff that's the enemy blue buff and obviously taking that away from Oslo's gonna lower his cooldown potential. He's Fighting hard to keep his team in this one, but SK Gaming, they just seem one step behind every single move that Meal Makers make. Yeah, and it's 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 very it's great to see MYM doing this because they have been in complete control of the map. And that's basically what they've been playing. Um, you know, we see that very, very long standoff between 20 and 25 minutes in the mid lane where MYM were so clearly chomping at the bit for a fight, but they just weren't comfortable doing it while the turret was there. And the moment they caught SK a little bit out of position with no turret to fall back on, they just dove in for the engagement. And seeing Charu, for example, use that teleport to pick up a kill on Candy Panda, they're willing to make brave big plays. And if it keeps up, they're looking set to win their first match of the LCS. SK wanted to try and push and get their first turret. There's five of them all grouped up, and they're just wondering, what are we going to do about this problem? And it's the split push problem. This is a problem that they faced against Fnatic many, many, many times. And every time it doesn't work out, unfortunately, for SK, are they slowly but surely falling into the same trap? Well, that's the problem. You fall behind, and then if you cannot deal with the split push and fight the 4v4, then you do get in trouble. The hook has landed. They've got Ocelot. They've gone into that chain of corruption, lands on everyone. That's going to be a great shockwave, though. Then the Cataclysm comes straight back what? in on top of it. Shari does take down Niv very quickly. Candy Panda manages to get one down, but it's two kills already for Sharu. Charu is insane with those charms. He's landed them time after time, and the number of Epic level ultimates there was massive. Stand United was channeled, but the target was killed before Shen could arrive. And if Mukate had actually arrived at the party, at the fight, that taunt could have made it even worse. So a two-for-one trade in which MYM are victorious thanks to an amazing closing charm there from Charu. Well, the Meteor Makers thinking about pushing this one through, but I don't really think they've got enough of an advantage to try and take it through and wisely. The brothers of Makata and Makla do back away from that mid lane. So they do just, you know, shove the wave, pick up the farm, and then back away safely as quickly as they can. We do have another very brief pause, which we can only apologize about. Right now, 5,000 gold is the advantage that MYM have. 
They're in the driving seat. It's up to SK to respond. Absolutely. 7-2 open kills. Like you say, 5-0 turrets. It is a big, big difference. And all the division taken away from SK Gaming now is really causing a problem because that's why Meal Makers are quite happy to maneuver around the map. But if I look at the minimap now, SK have just put out a bunch of wards. But the problem is that Libic, I believe, has just gone back and got himself that Oracle. So he's just going to come straight yeah. back in and clear it out. Basically, this entire game has been determined by the vision control. Because MYM have simply had better vision of the map, they have been able to make smarter decisions, push towers, you know, pick up kills where uh, maybe if SK had better vision, they, they could have avoided. So right now, we do see that Meteor Makers are going to slowly start pushing these waves again, and it's just going to be the split push battle until uh, probably Stand United is available again. I lied, he hasn't got an arm. I lied. I thought that's where he was going to go back and bite. Instead, he got double Ruby Crystal. He really wants to be beefy. That's a pretty, that's a pretty that's high a pretty HP. beefy living, right? Yeah, there. that's a 2,800 hit points thresh. So, you know, <laughs> this is this is the, the one weakness MYM have, and I've used the word, and I'm going to say it again. Libic has to throw himself at the enemy, and basically that's what his HP is for. He's pretty much just going to say, "Look, I'm going to soak up as much as I can. I'm going to get the defensive stats from that runic bulwark, which will make my effective HP even even greater, plus the shield that he's got from that dark passage." So. He's literally their be-all and end-all when it comes to a 5v5 engagement. Unless, of course, a good charm gets caught out or, you know, a good flash taunt from the cast. Oh, we see that actually Kubon's a long way away from this fight. And that's going to be the first turret picked up by SK Gaming there. They are slowly clawing themselves, keeping themselves in it. Oh, double water place. Yeah. That's never a good sign, though. The miscommunications there. It's a 5,000 gold difference, though, between these teams. And finally, they did actually catch Meteor Makers just slightly out of position. So that's a much needed confidence boost for SK number one because they're, you know, they're now going to have a little bit more freedom in the middle of the map. But more importantly, it's going to allow SK a little bit more control and entry into the MYM jungle. If they're feeling brave enough to get vision down, like you can see MYM doing now, MYM, they know there's no towers, they know they've got an advantage, so they basically just walk up and say, I'm going to ward. Now with that middle tower down, SK have the opportunity to do something similar if they stay grouped. See the Oracle battles going out, the ward clearing continuing. But the bottom lane is going to get shoved in by Sharu. The mid lane is, you can see, being worked on by that duo lane. The top lane was also pushed in by Kubon. So Meteor Makers pushing every single lane right now. Seeing one advantage they can gain. They have lost a lot of wards in there because Nif's just cleared out a whole bunch of them, but they are stacked, ready and waiting around that blue buff. And on top of that, look at Makata's itemization. You know, not only have they got this vision control and, you know, the elixir control, etc. Makata's gone for distortion boots. So the flash taunts, literally, again, just really, really signaling where their initiations come from. So basically, when you're looking at an engagement or a situation like this, your eye should only be on Makata and Libic because if they are a little bit ahead, as they were there for a few seconds, they're the ones that are going to start the fight. Candy Panda channels that ace in the hole, but it, it didn't really accomplish all that much. No, but I'm looking at Sharu, seeing where he's maybe trying to position himself across. You can see he's taking a little poke at Kevin, seeing if he can get towards him. Not really the target he wants to go for, though. Meteor Makers kind of lost in this jungle. And the question is, are SK Gaming going to go investigating? SK are thinking about it. They have some vision, which is making them feel a little bit brave than maybe they should. Blue Buff is up. They're going to try battle. There's the death and they've got Candy. The hook comes in and he's going to dive straight on it. He doesn't manage to get him, though. Now it's going to be the box going down. SK Gaming can turn this one around. The Kata does go down, but he's going to be Nip that picks up the killer body. Kevin goes very aggressive in there. Have they got the damage? They can't seem to get on the position. They have not really got the vision or the positioning to get this fight going. And it's Makla that picks up the double kill. So they trade two for two and Charu another fantastic charm in that engagement allows them to secure yet another exit kill as the fight plays out. Candy Panda with a very, very good cleanse. He actually counteracted that secondary pull of Thresh. And then when Thresh followed in, he pulled Thresh into the middle of his entire team. The problem was the box then surrounded every single member of SK. And they were trapped inside the box, allowing all of the, you know, the splash damage from Rise and from Ari to stack up. Sharu is not done yet. He's still hanging around there. There is that ward from SK in there, though, so they have got vision of him. They're not going to walk so blindly in, but Sharu really wants to get back on Candy Banner again. Yeah, and, and he can. I mean, his Deathfire Grasp is going to be available. Actually, is available. He does have his ultimate up as well with that blue buff, and he, he's, just, he's just going, well, look, I'm going to throw out a charm. If I get caught, I have three, you know, I have a hop, skip, and a jump from my ultimate to get to safety, and he can afford to play with fire effectively. So 9-4 currently Meteor Makers, not gone 100% their way, but definitely is looking like they are in a strong driving seat right now. 5,000 gold difference, you do see Meteor Makers clearing out around that bound ward and actually 
thinking of going for this one. So they've started this one off because they realize they have vision control. They're going to see Herkybot sneaking up, and they may decide to actually pick a fight with Herkybot. We'll see how this pans out. You know, I think smartly MYM decides to, to back away a little bit. Some split decision making, but they're basically saying we're not 100% convinced about this engagement. The rest of SK are slowly starting to group up, and they could actually contest this. MYM may try to set up a death bush bait here. Yeah? Sharu is definitely trying to set himself a death bush bait in the bottom lane, but this top lane area is in the, the round of Baron. It's where Ocelot's not having any of it. He's sticking around, he's got that ball out, keeping vision. He can see that Makla's not there, so he realizes they're not starting out the Baron, but Sharu is on the inhibitor turret right now in that bottom lane. He's continuing to keep the pressure in. Nif is the only person there. Now Kevin's going to close the gap. He's going to come around, not going to land that cocoon, but Sharu has to use his ultimate to get away, and that means Meteor Makers, they're going to turn back in towards the Baron. The hook that's Herky. towards Herkibot. Are they going to follow up on it? No, they're not. And the rest of SK Gaming racing to get in here, but the game, they are going to peel away from the Baron. So Baron is a very, very risky play for MYM because it's going to take them a long time to burst it down. Varus is their only real consistent damage source. Rise can help, but they're not the quickest team. SK are grouped up as five now against MYM. They've gone in! They're going in aggressive because Sharu is not there. Simply put, he's taking the inhibitor to it down though, so they have to get something from this. Will it be anything? They're going to try and get in there, but the chain of corruption hits all of them once again. Makata's the only man to go down, but they're going to lose an inhibitor for one person. That's simply not worth it. Meet your makers again. Tactically outplay them. SK have not fully com committed to this recall, though four of them, they've stuck around, they've stuck on Baron. MYM are now moving into position. There is no Shen for 35 seconds. Teleport is up for Charu. They've caught Lipic out. Are they going to get the Baron? Let's see if another fight's going to break out from MYM. I'm keeping my eye on that teleport. You can see the Baron is almost going to go down. There it is. It's going to be Herkibon that closes it out. Kubon gets caught on. The hook comes out from Lipic, but they're not going to follow it through. But the Nexus turret will Bang. go down in a moment. That is going to be Candy Panda picking up the kill, but there is one of the Nexus turrets going down now and Sharu is finally decided to back away. Living will go down but now SK Gaming with a five to man team with the Baron. Kevin's gone back. They could push a lot of objectives The here. problem is they are so far back they have only one outer turret picked up in order to push, in order to take advantage of these death timers. They have to start all the way at the first turret. They're going to do the best they can to tank this tower down. Once Candy Panda gets there it's going to help a lot and you can see defensive duties of both Herkibon and Kevin. They're holding the fort. They're going to defend against those super minions and a potential Charu x -packet. Yeah, everybody backs away from SK Gaming, so they're going to spend a lot of that money they just earned taking down the Baron. Picking up those kills has definitely closed the gap. You can see it's just 2,500 stacked between the two teams now, so closing half of the gap already just from that little bit of play. But they do have one Nexus to it down. The bottom lane is exposed. And those super minions pushing against them. That's why we see Kevin down in that bottom lane. He's starting to clear that out. He's got himself the Ryler's Crystal Scepter, though, along with that Abyssal Scepter. So definitely got a lot more hit points, a lot of ability power, and a lot of magic penetration as well. So he's going to start doing problems for them. But meanwhile, look at the two mid laners. Three and both closing in on 400 CS. Yeah, massive, massive numbers. It's just the mechanical skill that these guys have is, is fantastic. And with the split pushing that Char is doing, he's actually pulled a little bit further ahead. Look at SK now, they realize they've got this you know, power play position where they have the Baron buff up. Teleport. And they're going to try to put pressure on this bottom tower. Teleports on the bottom, you can see Charu. There's the home guard, he's running in. Look for the charm! They're going for Candy Panda, he's seen a chain of corruption just missing there. Charu's going to try and dive in, it's Candy Panda he wants to get onto. The damage on Ocelot is pretty big. They're going to close in, they're going to get the Shadow Dash across. Ocelot doesn't get the Shockwave off. This could be tragic for SK Gaming, they're going to dive in, but I'm not sure they've got the power to take it. It's going to be Herkimon, he's taken very low. Kevin's getting poked down as well, but Kata may well be the next focus, there goes Candy Panda, he gets caught out, now it's going to be Nip, Nip will get dropped down as well, that's a double kill picked up for Charu, Kevin's also getting focused on, that is another one down, and just like that, Meet Your Makers turning back around. Makata managing to join the body with Stand United, I think he got a four-man uh, Shadow Dash taunt there across the members of SK, and so, so crucially, Ocelot was popped before the shockwave landed. There are 40 seconds on the clock. This is enough time for Makla, Makati and Libic to finish this one out. They are tanky. There is only one turret to face check. Are they going to do it? That's the question. They need to get through Herkubot. It is a one versus three situation and this is a difficult one to defend. Surely no problem for them. Makla just working down that Nexus to it. That's going to get dropped down. Herkubot left on his own. I don't think they're even worried about it. They're just going to go straight for that Nexus and it will be Meet Your Makers picking up their first win in their first match of the summer. LCS. Ladies and gentlemen, what a game. 8 1 5 from Charu. The only death that he gave up was the death in the game winning team fight. Fantastic play. Team fights, maps, vision.